Hey, what's up? It's Tom from Plain White Tees, and you're listening to It's Real with Jordan and Demi. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Real with Jordan Demi. I'm here in L.A., in New York is Demi Ramos. And today our guest is Tom Higginson from Plain White Tees. What's going on, Tom? What up, you guys? How are you? Good, good. A um, little early here on the West Coast, but uh, I yeah. got I did a little cold compression mask before we Ooh. started. To kind of yeah, wake up my face. I, it's I working. Think, it's working for you. Looking oh, good. I appreciate it. Yeah. I did realize when I turned turn everything on this morning that I do need a haircut. I'm I'm really kind of getting bushy up uh, up top. Um, well, you know, I've got this weird little thing here that is you just do. You has have a mind of its own. So you have I don't a little, little renegade oh, wow. curl going on. Does yeah. that always happen when you get like? Is that how it sets always? That piece just does that. No, just when I have like really cool podcasts to do. That's the only oh, time. When yeah. you have to appear on camera, that's when it exactly. Happens. Yeah. Yeah. And Tom is wearing a Mickey shirt in honor of uh, Disney's 100th birthday. Yeah, happy has... birthday to the Walt Disney Company. Yeah, super cool. <laughs> were you a Disney kid or a Nickelodeon kid? Because I know those were two very different kids. Also, Cartoon Network kids were also so, very different kids. I was definitely more like Nickelodeon growing up. Like, with okay. like, do you guys remember You Can't Do That on Television? Do you know that? Yes, show? The, uh, that, that, that's the origin of the slime. Exactly. Yes. Being yeah. Slimed, yeah. So that was that's where I was at growing up. But I, you know, always loved, of course, all the Disney movies and Mickey Mouse and everything. And um, through the years, you know, become more and more of a Disney fan. We actually play. We do an annual gig uh, at Disney World at Epcot, which is really cool. So it's you get to kind of have fun, go to the parks and stuff. So yeah, Disney all the way. I feel like Nickelodeon yeah. was like the delinquent channel, like or in Cartoon Network. Those well, especially happen. especially uh, in the in the eighties and early nineties, Nickelodeon wasn't is what it is. It isn't what it was today. Do you have a favorite Disney movie, Tom? Ooh, um, I mean, does Pixar count? Can we go like? Sure, I guess. Like, I was thinking more old school Disney animation, but <laughs> oh, know. sure, okay. Well, I would. I, I in modern days, I would probably say like Wall-E or Toy Story three was really good. Okay. Um, but yeah, back in the day, the classics, it's funny because I have a kid and we watching some of those old school Disney cartoons with him. It's like, yeah. man, they're pretty dark. Like Pinocchio. Pinocchio like, is scary. Like, smokes <laughs> when he a turns cigarette. Into donkey, when he turns yeah. into a donkey. Yeah. Yeah. Terrifying. It's like, yeah, he like smokes a cigarette and gets all like lightheaded and like trips out and stuff. Like yeah. it's super like dark. It stuff. wasn't a cigarette. It wasn't? What was <laughs> it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, because they also yeah they also that. just didn't care about smoking and drinking in kids cartoons back in the day. There was everyone was like drinking. Like remember like the drunk stork from the Looney Tunes cartoons. <laughs> sure, and stuff? sure, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just a thing. But um, so this yeah, has I been uh, I can't can't even choose. They're all so good, you know, so good and so dark. Yeah, so good and so dark. Yeah, this this has been an animation corner. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> now let's talk about. Uh, new plain white tees music you have a new album coming out self-titled album on november 17th yeah um so i i've been digging the new the new music it's first of all there's a lot of variety you've released a few singles from the album so far a lot of variety some stuff is acoustic some stuff is a little harder more electric guitars and and i feel like it's it's modern it's not just a lot of times bands from that were big in the 2000s kind of redo their 2000 sound and i feel like this is like a newer plain white t sound so what's it been like creating this new set of new set of music um well i'm a thank you i'm glad you said that because we've always tried to you know kind of keep it fresh and never never kind of write the same song twice or make the same album twice you know um but in a way this the the this album, we really tried to hone in on like, okay, you know, there, there's just certain, uh, uh oh, you guys just, we're here. Oh, there. Okay. Just <laughs> there, yeah, yeah. <laughs> My phone was like glitching out yeah. here. Um, so yeah, there's just certain bands that, you know, you can, you, when you hear the name of the band, you can instantly think about, think of what they sound like and what, 
you know, the feeling that they give you when you listen to them, right? And so we were just kind of like making this tease album. We really tried to dive into that. Like, okay, when people think about Plain White Tees, what is it that they think of? What is it that that makes them feel? And really tried to, um, you know, just really get our hands dirty <clears throat> with that kind of a vibe and think having that in mind, like let's create an album that really just sounds and feels like that that heart of Plain White Tees. And so, like you said, there's some songs that are a little bit harder than others. Of course, we've got the acoustic songs on there because I think that really, you know, that sound has resonated with us with Delilah, One, Two, Three, Four, Rhythm of Love, songs like that. Um, so yeah, we really tried to bring out that, like the purest form of Plain White Tees on this album, if that makes sense. Yeah. I also love the art. Yeah. Well, well the art is, it, it's funny because we actually had, um, <clears throat> we had a couple different um, concepts. My, my friend Darren Varel, he did the, the layout and everything. And we had our buddy Austin taking the photos. And so there was like, at one point, there was this like collage thing that was going to be the cover. And then we were mm -hmm. at this, doing this photo shoot. And I brought a plain white tee, like, to wear in in one of the pictures. And <laughs> at one point, it, it was, I think Damar, our drummer, was like, oh, man, you got to steam that shirt. You know, it was all wrinkled or something. And so he was, like, helping steam it. And it was just hanging on this thing. And I was like, yo, like, we should take that picture right there. Like, the, it just looks so epic. Like, this plain white tee hanging on this, like, photo shoot, you know, like, hardware and um it ended up being like oh maybe that's the album cover you know it's simple and like you know uh stripped down as it gets and it, and it just fit like i just said like we really tried to hone in on that 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 pureness of what plain white tees music means to people and so it just made sense that the image on the front cover was like it reflected that and it was like the simplest version of plain white tees, you know, just having that that image on the cover. Well, my favorite is Would You Even from the new songs, because I think yeah. it sounds, it has like a power pop, kind of like Fountains of Wayne kind of sound oh, to it. Oh, baby. And, You're speaking so, my language there. I love Fountains of Wayne, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, thank you. Yeah, of course, of course. And why the, the self-titled after, you know, how many albums you guys are into this thing, this is the well, self-titled one. Well, again, it's like the, so we've been releasing um, the singles that we've released so far, uh, Spaghetti Tattoo, Happy, Would You Even, <clears throat> and then um, Red, we've flags. Had Red, Red Flags, and then we just put out You Plus Me, but they all leading up to it, we were just doing these black and white photos with no, um, no words or anything on them. And then of course, you know, on Spotify and Apple Music, they have the, the, the titles underneath the songs or whatever, but or underneath the artwork, you know? Um, so it just kind of made sense that this image that we we had of the plain white t-shirt was just like, it, it kind of said enough as it is. We didn't want to put text or anything on top of it. And um, it was kind of like, well, we've never done a self-titled album. This album, the whole point of it was to really hone in on that, that sound of plain white tees like, so it just, again, it kind of just like spoke for itself, like less is more kind of a thing, you know? And that's always worked for us in just the songwriting, in the in the, our music production. It's like the more we just kind of keep it raw and honest, the more it resonates. And so that was kind of the idea, just, yeah, leave the album self-titled, let that album cover speak for itself and let the music, you know, do the talking. I noticed uh, your guitar sitting in the background there um is that is that your like main playing guitar or is that more like a decoration guitar <laughs> oh yeah i just leave that on the couch so it looks cool you know yeah i, no, thought, I, mean, I yeah. love the honesty <laughs> you know no i'm not i'm totally kidding this is actually a really fun story with this guitar so this guitar fender stratocaster american made um this actually is on has been probably on on every plain white tees album that we've made wow. this is i've had this guitar since i was like 18 or 19 years old and i got it on uh when i yeah i was 19 because me and a couple friends after high school we did a road trip we just took a road trip to california 
because one of our friends' bands was recording out there. Um, they actually, you know, John Feldman, the from Goldfinger, the producer. We he, it was the first band he ever produced was this band called Show Off. They were our friends from Chicago. And so they were out there working with John um, in, this would have been in 98, 1998 or something. And um, so, yeah, we took a road trip out there. And I bought this guitar in San Francisco on Haight and Ashbury, like the corner, like the famous like corner where like the hippie movement like happened and everything. Um, and all the guys, all my buddies were like pissed at me because now we had to lug this guitar home. So it was like strapped to the roof, like the whole drive back from California to Chicago, uh, this guitar in a case. But like I said, it's pretty much made it on every Plain White Tees album. Um, that we've ever done and uh yeah it's like my my baby so yeah i don't honestly i don't even know why it's up here i think we probably were tracking something uh we do a lot of tracking at my house so probably recorded something a couple weeks ago and it's just i was too lazy to put it away i think so it's chilling on the couch i feel like picking a guitar color like the color of your guitar is like one of the most important things ever right so why baby blue that's a great question um <laughs> So this band, uh, there's a Chicago band that I idolized called Loud Lucy. You guys have totally never heard of them. They didn't really break big. They had like one single that was on the radio for a, a minute in the 90s. Um, but the singer of that band played a baby blue uh, Stratocaster. And so I was always like, oh, that guitar is so cool. And uh, always kind of wanted it. And then, like I said, when we were in this random guitar shop in San Francisco, and there it was. It was like the Wayne's World moment where it was like on the wall and it was like, ah. And so I'm like, screw it, I'm going to buy it. And like I said, all the guys were kind of mad at me, but that's okay because I got it home safe. And, you know, here we are talking about it, what, 25 years later? Oh my God, crazy. You know, it's funny you brought up John Feldman, is we've had, we just recently had MXPX and uh, Ryan Key from Yellow Card on the show. Oh, nice. And so, Feldman's come, John Feldman's come up a little bit, um, especially his work with younger artists, with younger pop punks, this pop punk resurgence and all this kind of stuff. Um, what do you make of this whole pop punk resurgence and people being into that like Y2K era rock, like the younger people? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I mean, obviously it's awesome, you know, <laughs> being one of those bands that was kind of associated with that sound and with that scene, um, I mean, it's great for us and it's like, it's, it's fun for us because we get to reunite. Like we've been playing all these like random festival shows with like all American rejects and Hawthorne Heights and, you know, bands that we, you know, never thought we'd like be playing again with in front of thousands of people, you know, um, like we're doing when we were young festival this weekend. And that's sure. just like, that's going to be so insane. Um, so, I mean, it's it's crazy that it's, we've kind of stuck it out long enough for it to come back around. You know, it's, it's yeah. weird to think that like, yeah, we kind of have survived everything in between there. And now I guess it's kind of cool again or whatever. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it's just fun that all that music is still lives on and is still, like you said, being discovered by like younger people probably their like older brother or their freaking parents listened to us back in the day and now they're getting into it. And I mean, it's, it's, it's convenient and awesome timing that we're, we have this new music coming out because it's going to hopefully connect all those dots and, you know, get the, get the young people that are just hearing about the band and all the, you know, older fans that are going to come to when we were young and are kind of enjoying this resurgence along with all the bands, you know? Yeah, 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 totally. How do you uh, name the band? Like, where did this name come from? What, Plain White Tees? Yes. Um, so, yeah, basically, not a really fun story, but we had uh, a bunch uh, of, like, a bunch of, like, crappy names that were, like, you know, I think Where's Arnie was one of the contenders, which is a Gilbert, what's even Gilbert Grape reference, movie reference. Uh, Spotless was another one of the... Uh, the names and we were always just like like ever since the start of playing white tees always inspired by like oldies you know we have that like mm -hmm. kind of like throwbacky sound in our music i think that classic songwriting vibe 
And um, so Plain White Tees was one of the names just because it's like such a classic, you know, they, they, people have always worn plain white t-shirts, plain white tee shirts ever since like, you know, the fifties, I mean, probably before that, but in the fifties, <laughs> I feel like James Dean and Marlon Brando, like made it a real cool, you know, thing to wear. And then it was like the grease moment, the greasers and like a leather jacket over the top of it. And um, so, yeah, it was just kind of this thing that's always existed, always is cool. Um, and it kind of harkened back to that, like that oldies feel that we had in our music. So we just decided to, mm. to go with that. Yeah. Your early albums were straight, like rock. They were rock albums. Um, so not going to like the story behind Hey There Delilah, but I'm <laughs> curious about the decision to go in that more acoustic direction. Did you get any um blowback from your bandmates did anyone say oh, why are we doing this acoustic stuff like what you know what was it like making that kind of music <clears throat> starting out yeah not really because the, all the bands that we loved you know growing up from you know nirvana to weezer to green day to you know pearl jam like all that like grunge and early kind of punk alternative stuff like these were like the like the coolest rock bands that existed and they would always have like a lot like a song or two that was like acoustic on their albums you know it was like a very dynamic thing <clears throat> that we loved about those bands you know it was always cool when a band could like you know melt your face off and then like make you real sad by like stripping it down and like you know doing like a ballad um, so that's just kind of, that was just kind of the mentality. So like, yeah, our first couple of albums were definitely more just like pop punk and like rock leaning, but they all had a couple acoustic songs, a couple like more chill songs. And, um, you know, for better or worse, those were just the songs that really gravitate or, you know, that, that people really gravitated to and really connected to, um, more than, you know, some of the rock stuff, I guess. How did you um, feel about that? Like, I mean, the fact that people liked any of our songs was awesome, you know? <laughs> so we weren't, like, really going to fight it. It was like, okay, cool. Like, people seem to, like, like it when we do this, you know? Right. And it's, like, it's not something we were, like, forcing. That was just, like I said, a very natural, like, to me, all the albums that I love, they had that dynamic, you know? So, yeah. Um, so yeah. And then it, it definitely, in, in after, once, you know, Delilah and One, Two, Three, Four um in rhythm of love once those were so such big hits then it was definitely like a little bit like okay wait like are we supposed to should we do more songs like that you know we kind of like fought we didn't know what to do because it was like well we want to like rock out mm -hmm. but like we want to like we do these acoustic songs anyway so there was a little bit for a few albums in there it was like we were just really trying to like push ourselves and just not be like cornered as this like you know we wanted to be, I don't know, just unique and different. And I feel like we finally, like I said, on this album, this new album, really like, like accepted like who we are and like owned it to like the, the best possible extent. I don't know. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 I have a really important question. Oh, please. This one's for the ladies. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Delilah? Delilah. Um, <laughs> well, that's a good question. She is a real girl. Oh my which, God. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. here's the bummer. Here's the bummer. Never actually dated her. It was like a girl that oh, I, wow. so I met her in Chicago. She was like a friend of a friend of mine and we were going to a concert and she's like, Hey, my friend Delilah uh, is going back to school tomorrow. She's got nothing going on tonight. Can we like pick her up and like, bring her to this concert and I was like okay no cool way. whatever and so then yeah we went and we picked this girl up and I was just like she walked out of her house and I was like oh my god like <laughs> Did it song so, right like, there? so pretty yeah <laughs> and so then the whole night I'm just like being goofy and like trying to like you know like flirt with her but like just being dumb you know and then at the end of the day when we dropped her off I told her that I had a song about her and, Whoa. you know, even though I, it was obvious that to both of us that I was like just being stupid, but 
she we kept in touch when she went back to school in New York the next day. And over the next few weeks, we kept in touch. And she would keep playing along and asking me, like, so where's my song? When do I get to hear my song? <laughs> and uh, I was like, oh, I guess I, I, I got to write this song now, you know? And so, yeah, I wrote the song. And literally the only thing I knew about this girl is that she was really pretty. And she went to school in New York City. So, like, the first few lines of the song, like, they just kind of spilled out. And they just, it was like, it came out of me, like, in, in two seconds. And then it was like the whole rest of the song. I was like, damn, this is this is feeling pretty good. Like now I have to like make every line as good as these first few lines, you know? So I kind of took my time with it and made it like if I was in this relationship, if, if there was this long distance thing, you know, I'm this guy trying to make it, trying to pay the bills with my guitar. And, you know, someday we're going to it's it's all going to be good. Just believe in me. And, you know, and. That's the kind of the, just the vibe that I just had to roll with for the rest of the song. And um, and yeah, that it became Hater Delilah. And then so she she actually had a boyfriend through all of this stuff. So she <laughs> was just very innocently like, you know, egging me on. And there was never really anything. It was not even really that much chemistry or anything. It was just like one of those like chance things that that. Um, yeah just kind of hit me with that inspiration at that perfect moment and you know got that song out of it did you send her the song so i did i actually played it for her or i didn't play it for her i brought her uh, a copy of the album when it was uh done and i gave it to her and kind of sat awkwardly with her for a minute and then like left and then she listened to it and she was like oh my God, this is so beautiful, but I don't know what to say because, you know, I'm with this guy and I'm like, yeah, I don't, I'm, I'm not trying to like freaking bring, dra <laughs> bring drama in your life. I'm just trying to like, you know, I wrote, we talked about this song forever. So like I wrote it, here you go and everything. And then, so she'd come out to our shows in New York and it was, she was super supportive. She actually, there was one moment where I thought maybe like, you know, the stars were going to align because so I was I ended up I was dating somebody pretty seriously after all that happened and she was still with this guy. And as the song was blowing up, you know, we kind of text back and forth like, oh, my God, I just heard the song here or, you know, oh, my God, the song is like climbing up the charts, whatever. It's on the radio. And so we kept in touch the whole time. But we were both in these relationships. And um, when we got nominated for for uh, the Grammys. So real quick, one point I left out of the story, which is pretty crazy. Uh -oh. Before I ever wrote the song, I told when she was egging me on, like, where's my song? Where's my song? At one point, I told her, like, OK, I am going to write the song and it's going to be the song that makes us famous. And you're going to be my date for the Grammys. <gasps> I said that to her before I wrote a note of the oh, song. No. And so the song like and, and this was in like 2003. The song didn't even come out until 2005 and then it didn't even come out on the radio until 2007. Wow. So like this was a wow. slow and steady build of like the Plain White Tees, you know, career and the song and everything. And so, yeah, in 2000, at the end of 2007, when the Grammy nominations came out and we got nominated, I'm like, OK. And, and at that, I, me and my girlfriend at the time had just broken up. And I was like, OK, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to call Delilah because it's like <laughs> I have to at least invite her and see because oh, this whole weird God. like, you know, like this premonition or whatever you want to call it, like this this uh, manifestation or whatever, you know, <laughs> it's like it's all coming true. So I called her up and I'm like, hey, like we got nominated for for the Grammys. Like, do you want to go? Like, what's up? And she's like, well, actually, her me and me you know her and her boyfriend had just broken up <gasps> and so it was like so she was single i was single and she's like hell yeah i'll go to the grammys and so but by the time the grammys actually happened in like february or whenever they are i was back with my girl and she was back with, with oh her my god so but we still she still went with us and it was like a you know fun platonic night or whatever but like it was weird that for a second there it was like is this going to really happen? Like what, five years later, whatever it was like kind of crazy. Shout out Delilah.
<laughs> that would have been a great like Nicholas Spark style ending, if right? Totally. And then we all lived happily ever after. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. Wow, that's pretty wild. That was a cool um, story. Yeah, it's fun that um, a lot of the the main points of that are on your Wikipedia page, of course. But the part where she was egging you on is not. Ah, yeah. And the Wikipedia page frames it where it makes it like you just kind of came out of nowhere with this song for this sure. person you barely knew. So good to fill I mean, in the blanks there. That is, that is also true, but there was definitely a, like, had she not been like asking about it and bugging me about it, like, maybe it would, you know, yeah. I'd been like, okay, whatever this girl in New York who has this boyfriend that's not going anywhere, you know? So yeah, the fact that she played along and she would, I don't know if you guys remember, there were these, away messages it was like aol instant messenger like oh, that's how we were God. keeping in touch at the time that's yeah. that's how long ago it was and she would like have song lyrics from like our first album stop she would like put up lyrics as her away messages oh and so that was like that was my big sign that like okay she she cares and she's like thinking about me or you know there was a little bit of like i said that weird innocent flirtation kind of back and forth happening so it was like just enough for me to be like, okay, screw it. I'm, I'm writing this song. So it was love at first sight. For you me. Believe in that. For me. Yes. You do? <laughs> no, I mean, I don't, I don't, I mean, there's definitely, I feel like, I don't know. I feel like I'm very like the hopeless romantic, you know? Mm -hmm. So I can fall in love. Like I can, I let's not call it falling in love mm -hmm. because but Infatuation, like I can, maybe yeah i think that's more of, like i can see a girl like and without saying a word to her i can be like oh my god there's just something and it's not like just a beauty thing it's not just a style or whatever but there's just like you know just some people like light that spark in you and it's i don't know you can't really explain it's not a not a like a um you know you can't really quantify what that thing is it's just some like some people can look at a girl and be like oh she's okay and I can look at her and be like, whoa, there's just something about her that's like drawing me to her. You know, I, I think know. that's that's my issue. Why I'm still single um, is that I don't get infatuated as uh, as a lot of people. A lot of guys just get like really I, I have a problem getting infatuated with with women. So maybe I, maybe I need. I thought you were going the other way because I feel like that's why I'm single, because. I'm too infatuated and it's like every other girl I see, or well, not every other girl, but you know, every once a week, I feel like I fall in love. It's like, Oh my God, I can spend <laughs> the rest of my life with this person. And then, yeah, it never works out that way though, but whatever, but it, but it feels good to have that hope and that dream. I don't know. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about a little bit about <clears throat> the non, the non hits, the early stuff, the, the harder pop punk stuff. Um, cause that was my wheelhouse when I was, you know, in middle school and high school and stuff. Yeah. Um, my favorite, like early plain white tees song is revenge. I think that song ah, kicks ass. Um, nice. so do you have a, like, if you were going to recommend to someone who knows plain white tees from your acoustic stuff, like, do you have a favorite, like harder rock song that you could recommend or that you like playing? <laughs> Man, it's funny because like, obviously we put a lot of our, our, like our, ourselves into the songs, you know, like, but I, I, you know, it's all comes from the heart. It all comes from like real experiences, but I feel like those first two albums, like stop and all that we needed were definitely like straight up diary entries. Like it was like, like I listened to those albums and it's like, it, it, I can feel exactly what I feel or what I felt like back then, you know, going through some of my first relationships and really just every other day, there was just something that happened that was like, oh my God, I can't believe this. Either like bad or good, you know, it was like the two extremes of like first love. And so I just really poured all of that into those early songs. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think you, any song on, on Stop, or all that we needed, which are basically our two like most rock records. And then every second counts was had a lot of that had our time now and hate, which is I love hate is one of my favorite songs 
um, of ours for sure. And that was our first one that was ever on the radio, which is funny because that's a pretty heavy one. If you guys mm -hmm. know that one. Um, so it's kind of fun that we, we had really our first break with that song, a harder song. Um, but yeah, any of those first two albums, I feel like are really like straight up hard on the sleeve kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah, I guess I didn't really answer your question, but, um, no, that's good. I, you threw, you threw some out there. You threw some out there for sure. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> you guys have like appeared on some like TV shows and stuff over the years. You did the Macy's Thanksgiving day parade one time. Oh my um, God. What is that like? Just yeah. like out of curiosity, what is it like to be in the Macy's day parade? Um, it was cool. It was weird because it's like, okay, you're going, you're kind of like waving to people. And then it's like, okay, you guys, you know, we had all of like, I don't know, a minute and a half or something of like actual camera time, whatever it was. And so it was like this whole thing where you're just kind of waiting for your, you know, like moment to come where, you know, you got to be on and on camera. <laughs> and then it's like, cool, you get it. And it's like, okay, cut, you're done. And it's like, so this, <laughs> it was just a weird, like, I don't know. A lot of that happens like with, in the, in the, like when you're doing late night TV or when you're doing like TV stuff or whatever, a lot of like hurry up and wait, they call it. You know what I mean? It's like, you got to be there. You've got to be ready. You've got to go. And then it's like, but you just kind of are sitting around like anticipate, you know, getting nervous or like just waiting for the one moment. And then all of a sudden it's like, okay, let's go. We got to go, got to go. You do it. And then it's just done. And it's like, wait, what just happened almost, you know, it's like such a like flash, like you blink and then you're done. But you're like, damn, I just did like the Macy's Day Parade. But like in it, it just feels weird. I don't know. I don't it know almost feels like the whole anything. point is to have that 90 seconds of you on on film of you totally. saying I was there, you know. Exactly. Yeah. It's it's just like, um, yeah, it, 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 it's kind of almost like the uh, back in the day that was like the, you know, they went before social media. It's like, OK you got your one chance to be on camera to be seen by millions of people or something, right. you know, and now it's like people can go viral with a, you know, a TikTok video or something, but, but yeah, yeah. I mean, it was really cool. <clears throat> and honestly more so just to say, like, just to have that on like our, our resume or whatever, you know, it's like, um, yeah, we did the freaking Macy's day parade. That's just pretty cool. So what was cooler that or being on iCarly? <clears throat> well, iCarly, you know, that is just standing the test of time for sure. Um, that was one of the biggest things we've ever done. And we didn't know it at all at the time. Like we filmed that episode before iCarly even ever aired. Wow. And so nobody knew if it was like a hit or a dud or whatever, you know. And we just, we showed up one day, we did our thing. And then we you know, the next day we probably play a show in, you know, San Diego or something. I don't know. Um, and then, yeah, it ended up turning into this huge cultural phenomenon. And uh, it was awesome. I mean, it was a great experience. And, um, yeah, super fun, super easy. And, like, again, people are still asking about it 20 years later or whatever, you know. I guess, well, 15 years later maybe for my Carly. But... Yeah, it was like a big thing. Like we had no idea it was good. Nobody had like the show didn't even know it was going to blow up like that. You yeah, know? now that there's a reboot and everything. So yeah, and I you got to be one of the few. How many bands can there be to play both the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade and be on an episode of iCarly? You know, I think rare, uh, rare <laughs> company. Very few. Yes. Um, before <laughs> we let you go here, I know you are Chicago guy. Um, and so I'm curious about like, some Chicago stuff we wanted to run. Um, is is Chicago, we'll do Chicago pizza first. Um, is Chicago pizza, is it overrated or underrated? <laughs> well, come on. I'm not going to say overrated, certainly. But uh, I, I will say that Chicago p pizza, for those of you know people that don't know, that's basically refers to the deep dish pizza. <clears throat> which is like, you know, literally like this thick. I don't know anybody that's not watching the video. It's like, you know, two inches thick or more even. And, mm. you know, you got to eat it with a fork and a knife. It's, it's an experience. But literally people in Chicago, like, we eat that like once a year, maybe, or like twice a year. Like, it's not what we get all the time. So like, just because Chicago is kind of famous for it, it's like, 
Chicago people aren't just like sitting around eating pizza every day. You know, it's like a, a once in a blue moon treat because it is so indulgent and such a like, you know, a, a thick, heavy meal. So, um, so yeah, I would not say overrated. Uh, and I wouldn't say underrated either. I think it's what you think of it. It's, it, it's really freaking good, but it's, mm. it's, you know, to be, to be, um, you know, a once in a while thing for sure. Do you have a favorite Chicago music venue? Oh, that's really hard. Or maybe one just... from your early days that you kind of have nostalgia for. So I, I, that's an easy, when you put it that way, there's this, uh, a venue called the Metro, that I would go see, like I went to go see Weezer there on their on the Blue album, like first album ever. Um, probably one of their first times coming through Chicago. I was there at this place called the Metro. And this was like the place where every band would come through and play like right before they blow up, you know? So it was a really, it's a really beautiful venue. Um, and when we were coming up as a local band in Chicago, that was like our one of our first goals was to play the Metro. And um, within about a year of being a band, we got our first show at the Metro. And it was like the biggest, like that might as well have been like Wembley Stadium or something like to us back in the day. So we got to play Metro. So yeah, that's what I would, uh, that's what I would say for that, the Metro. Do you have a favorite band from Chicago besides the band <laughs> Chicago? <laughs> um, I mean, so many good bands, of course. Uh, you know, bands like the Smashing Pumpkins, you know, um, there was a, a indie like punk rock band called the Smoking Popes that I really the loved. Smoking Popes. Up. Yeah. Do you, have you heard of them? No, I, I'm, I'm familiar with the Smoking Popes. I, um, it's funny as my mom, um, was trying to think of a band with the smoking in the title and I was oh, like really? smoking popes, and she went the chain smokers. Ah, <laughs> way more mainstream. Yeah, and I was like, difference. Mom, you're so cool. You know the smoking popes. <laughs> and but then she meant yeah. she was talking about the chain smokers the whole time. An, an honest mistake, you know. Yeah. But yeah, the smoking popes were were so freaking cool. Um uh obviously like bands of a boy, um a band called Lucky Boys Confusion that was kind of our like big brother band like we play so many shows with them back in the day um you know a band that we're actually playing with on uh there's actually we're doing two shows in chicago to celebrate the album release next month and we've packed the bills with like our favorite uh, like chicago bands and like uh, some of our best friends there's a band called am taxi who if you guys don't know them you gotta check them out they're so freaking good um, and then a band called One Life, who might be my favorite band of all time. They're they're like they're kind of like screamo and kind of hard, but they're so melodic and like like so. What, what are they called? They're called One Life. One Life is that an emo band? Are you emo? Uh, I mean, I'm like slash <laughs> emo for sure. You know. Mm -hmm. Um, and then a band called The Dog and Everything, who uh, actually I we who, the singer of that band produced a lot of our new album with us so we're a lot it's like a really it's going to be a great like hometown bunch of friends uh playing these shows yeah awesome. so yeah so there's a couple couple great cool. that, that question just kind of worked itself in i i had no idea that you had this whole like chicago thing playing that's cool that's cool yeah it's called the hometown takeover it's it, oh, we nice. haven't done chicago obviously in years because of especially with the pandemic and everything so um, so yeah, we're doing these shows to celebrate the album. And like I said, getting all the old friends and bands and stuff to do. Yeah. It. Yeah. And last Chicago question. Um, do you have a Chicago, favorite Chicago Cubs player? Like current player or like current, all, time? all time, all time could be. Any well, man, as a kid growing up watching Ryan Sandberg, that was like, he was my guy. <clears throat> um, classic player back in the day. Um, and then, of course, God, the, the 2016 team with, you know, Rizzo, Chris Bryan, Javi Baez, you know, it's like that, that, that lineup will always be magical because they were the ones that, that actually got us a World Series finally. Um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, big Cubs. How'd you know Cubs, by the way, not Sox? Because you have a Cubs, you have a picture of your Instagram of the oh yeah, me, Cubs jersey up, throwing out the first pitch, maybe. I I did, yeah. We they've been so cool to us. It's like the perfect like 
anytime the Cubs called out, you know, like about something, it's like, yes, we'll do it. We've done the, the seventh inning stretch a bunch of times. I sang the national anthem at Wrigley no. once, which was like the most nerve wracking <laughs> like moment of my life. So, we have to find that. Yeah. It's, it's, it, yeah, it, it was uh, it was tough because you're you're singing on in in the middle of the field, obviously, and the speakers are like they're like three seconds behind you, literally. Like so, it's like oh say can't oh say like oh. blast them back at you. So you're like, and you don't know this until you're there in the middle of it doing it. And so it's like you know you don't want to mess up the words, you don't want to screw anything up, and then you get this weird like thing happened that you'd never thought, you know, you're like, Oh my God, you're freak out for a second. But yeah. So very nerve wracking. I probably wouldn't want to do that again just because, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know. But, um, and then the first pitch was just, yeah. That was How the first did your first pitch turn out? out? You know, I'm not, uh, I'm not ashamed of it, but I'm not proud of it. Put it that way. You we'll, know, we'll find, but you did better than 50 cents. Absolutely. Yeah. It was not a disaster, uh, but it wasn't a strike. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. All right. As long as it got up there, as long as it got up there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun. All right. All right, Tom, we will let you go. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. The new self-titled album is out November 17th. Any tour plans? What's happening kind of after the holidays? What do you got going on? Yeah. Uh, like I said, we're doing this Chicago takeover for the album release, which is going to be really fun. And then, yeah, next year we are looking at, we're starting to plan uh, a tour. Like I don't want to, nothing's official yet, but definitely be some touring early in the year. Uh, we're going to Brazil for the first time Brazil. ever in uh, May, which, or I'm sorry, March, I believe, which is going to be super fun. Uh, really cool package with that one. So, so yeah, I think next year, once this album is out, I think we're going to just be out there. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll kind of be everywhere. So I'm excited. All for right. It. All right. Hi. Okay. Well, we'll looking forward to it. And thank you so much again. Absolutely. Thank you guys. Yeah. He's still there. He got, there we go. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, let me ask you a question, Demi. Have you, uh -oh. have you ever had a boy either play you a song or dedicate a song to you as a way to, to woo you? Oh man. <clears throat> Or written a song about well, you. Well, one that I like know that. about for sure. Um, there maybe was a few incidents, but uh, okay, wow. Well. Um, I have something that just reminded me of high school was this this guy who um asked me to prom with a song on stage in front of the whole school, and then he like flipped over his guitar and it said prom with a question mark. And unfortunately, I already had my prom situation sorted out because I wanted to go with like my best friend. So we already arranged it. Like we got each other, corsage, whatever. Ooh, so, man. That poor yeah. guy, he put himself out there with the guitar. And he was an amazing guitar player. The best. He probably thought he had, he thought it, he had, he had it in the bag. Like you, if you're an amazing guitar player, you do it on the, you put prom on the back. Like, Maybe we should have said yes, Jordan. <laughs> I don't know. Like most, most know. people go crazy for that kind of thing, but you know. What about you, Jordan? Tell me. No, I well, I never know. I've never had anyone written a song. The only thing I remember, I remember there was a girl in seventh grade made me an origami swan as like a as a way to like say that she liked me. She gave me an or she like made me a little origami swan. And I remember there was some kind of like skating party or some kind of like activity night that she wanted me to meet up with her at. I, I forgot all about Jordan. that right now. No. Yeah. Wow. What did you do? I was polite about it. I wasn't really into her, um, but I was polite and I accepted it. Yeah. I wasn't, I think, I, I think this was seventh grade, I think is when that happened. So it was, pretty young like it's a little bit different seventh grade is a little bit different than high school prom in terms of maturity level but i think i handled it pretty well Aww. yeah anyway um that'll be it for us as always go to popdust.com for the latest in pop culture and music news follow me on instagram at jordan edward studio follow demi at demi underscore ramos anything you want to shout out demi any projects anything you want to say to the people before we go 
No, no, no. You you hesitated. You hesitated. Too long. I wanted to shout something out, but I'm not gonna do it. Okay, she's not gonna do it. No <laughs> shout out today. All right, guys. Until next time, we'll see you later. Shout out, Bad Bunny.